Hello and welcome to the calculator guide video on parametric equations finding the gradient of a curve on a Casio FX CG50. We're going to draw a graph on the FX CG50 involving two parametric equations that were given here and use that to help us answer this particular question. A curve is defined by the parametric equations x equals t squared plus 2t and y equals t plus 1. You can see t is our parameter there and we've got two parts to the question find the gradient of the curve at the point where t equals minus 4 and part b find the cartesian equation of the curve now part b is going to essentially be a non-calculator method because it's going to be heavily algebraic but we are going to be able to use the fx cg50 to help check our final answer but certainly we can use the graph from these equations produced on the FX CG50 to help us with part A. So from main menu, let's select five for graph. And from the initial screen here, we need to change the type of function that we input here. At the moment, we're not set up to input parametric equations, but if you press F3 for type, and then F3 once more for parametric, you can see that the inputs changed to be able to input, well, several parametric equations, we're only going to use the top pair, xt1 and yt1, and the color that we've got there is blue, so we're going to produce a blue colored graph on our axes. So let's input our two parametric equations. To get a letter T, it's just this button here that's got x, theta, and t in. It will be a capital T when you input this, but that doesn't matter. We just need to replicate the two parametric equations, input them as they are, but with perhaps a capital T rather than a lowercase t. So the first one here is t squared plus 2t. That's our x equals. And then press execute when that's filled in. And then our y equation is t plus 1. There we go. And we've actually had those two equations selected. You can tell they've been selected because the equal signs there have been highlighted. So these are selected ready to draw. Now I'm going to show you what drawing the graph looks like in the first instance. It's not quite what we want, so we are going to change things afterwards. But let's just have a look at what the graph looks like straight away. So it's F6 for draw. Now, the way that the CG50 is currently set up, or the settings that we've got to display the graph, it isn't showing all of the graph here. And it's certainly not showing any negative values there for our T, which are going to be useful for us to be able to answer part A of the question, where we want to identify the gradient at T equals negative four. So we're going to change the display parameters, essentially, for the graph. If you press F3 for V window, and then we can see it's view window. And if you press F3 one more time, that will give us a standard layout for our axes. So you can see there that the X minimum value has changed. You can change that within the graph by using the navigation button. Now there's a very important parameter that we do need to change and that's our minimum maximum for our T value. So if you scroll down, here we've got our T or theta minimum. Well, we want to change that because we want some negative values for t. So we can change that to what we wish, provided in this example we go to at least t equals negative 4. I'm going to put in negative 10, so we've got a good range. And then we need to change the maximum. I'm just going to change that to 10. And then we've got pitch here. Pitch essentially just means the increment by which it goes up. I might just raise that then to 0.1 and execute. Now, there's one other thing that we need to change as well. If you just press exit at this stage, and we'll go back here to the input screen, at this stage, press shift and then the menu button, so shift and setup, and you can see we've got a list of options here. We're going to scroll down and we're going to switch derivative on. So scroll down to derivative, and then F1 to switch that on. That's gonna be useful for us to be able to answer part A of the question. So press execute. One more time, then let's press F6 to draw the graph and as you can see the graph looks more extensive than it did the first time where we only had a segment of the curve uh, now we've got a little bit more displayed including a negative portion I'm just going to navigate right actually remember we set the x-axis to minus 10 10 but we've got a lot of space on the left hand side so if we navigate right we can see a little bit more of we can see more of the graph so there we go, there's our parametric curve. 
Now, what we need to do, what we're interested in, is we're interested in finding the gradient when t equals minus 4. So we're going to use trace on this. So press F1 to establish a trace. And you can see that we've got several bits of information displayed here. We've got dx by dt, so the value of the derivative of x when t equals, well at the moment t is equaling negative 10. Remember that was the minimum amount from when we did the settings that we were going to put in. So it's gone straight there as soon as we press trace. We've got dy by dt, so the value of the derivative of y when t equals negative 10. In fact, the derivative dy dt is actually always 1, which we'll explore in just a moment. And it's also got quite crucially there dy by dx, which is actually going to be the gradient of the curve at various points at the moment. Again, it's t equals minus 10. Now we're going to change that value of t, and you can just literally input the value of t that you want. So we're going to enter our t value of minus 4. So straight from the screen, it's minus 4 equals, and you can see our t value has changed to negative 4. dy by dt is still the constant 1. dx by dt has changed to minus 6. And then we've got a value dy over dx equals minus 0 0.166. I think that's referencing negative 1 sixth. Let's just have a look at where that comes from. Well, we know dy by dt equals 1. We know dx by dt equals minus 6. dy by dx can be found by doing dy by dt divided by dx by dt, or alternatively, dy by dt multiplied by the reciprocal of dx by dt, which is dt by dx. So multiplied by minus one six, that's one times minus one six. Well, that is the solution that we have for dy by dx. And that is our solution for part A. Now we might need to just provide some evidence of this. So let's just go through the non-calculator method of deriving this. Well, dx by dt algebraically, well, that would become 2t plus 2. And as we saw earlier, dy by dt, the derivative of that is just going to become 1. The derivative of t just becomes 1. The derivative of the plus 1 just becomes 0. So we've just got a 1 there as a constant. So if we work out what our dx by dt is when our parameter t is minus 4, it's 2 times minus 4, that is minus 8, plus 2, that's minus 6. So that's where that minus 6 has come from. And so therefore, when we divide the 2 there, we get 1 over minus 6. So the gradient of the curve at the point where t equals minus 4 is going to be minus 1 sixth or obviously as we've got displayed there on the calculator, minus 0 0.166 as a decimal approximation to three decimal places. Now for part B, find the Cartesian equation of the curve. We're going to use a non-calculator algebraic method to be able to solve this as the CG50 doesn't have an algebraic manipulation function. And this has been discussed several times. Obviously, algebraic calculators typically aren't allowed in examinations you want to show a full algebraic method so we're going to do that but we are going to use the cg50 and table mode just to check our solution once we've got our cartesian equation of the curve now in order to do this what we need to do is to substitute one of our parametric equations into the other uh, by rearranging to make t the subject uh, and then substituting that into the other equation and then perhaps simplifying that equation so we can have a look at it in the form y equals. Now we can do this by manipulating x or y to start with. It might be easier to do an example of where we manipulate y first. I'm going to show you both methods of how we can approach things. But let's manipulate y so that t is the subject and then substitute that into x, simplify, and then we should have our Cartesian equation. So we've got y equals t plus 1. We can rearrange that to t equals y minus 1. And then what we can do is then substitute t for y minus 1 into our equation for x. So x equals y minus 1 all squared plus 2 times y minus 1. So we're going to expand this x equals y squared minus 2y plus 1, that's the square bracket expanded, plus 2y minus 2. If we simplify that, we get x equals y squared minus 1. And then, so we can make y the subject, we can add 1 to both sides, x plus 1 equals y squared, and take the square root of both sides, y equals the square root of x plus 1. 
So here we have our Cartesian equation of the curve, y equals square root x plus 1. I'm just going to show you how you can start with x and manipulate that and substitute that into the equation for y to get the same result. It's a little bit trickier because we have x equals t squared plus 2t. We've got two instances of t. We've got a t squared term and we've got 2t. And we want to be able to ultimately substitute t equals into the y equals equation. Well, the way we're going to get around that is to complete the square for the x equation. So if we complete the square on the right hand side of this, we get x equals t plus 1 all squared. Now, if we expanded that, that would give us t squared plus 2t plus 1. We don't want that plus 1, uh, so we need to subtract 1 as well. So we've got x equals t plus 1 all squared minus 1 as our completed square. So let's rearrange to make t the subject. Add 1 to both sides. x plus 1 equals t plus 1 all squared. Square root both sides. Square root of x plus 1 equals t plus 1. And we can see, well, what else equals t plus 1? y equals t plus 1. We've got that from the second equation. So we can substitute in t plus 1 for y straight away. And we've got there y equals the square root of x plus 1. So we've got the same result, whichever one we substitute into the other. I think it's probably easier in this particular case to have substituted the y equation into the x rearranged. Now, I did promise you a method that we could check if that is correct using the information that we've got in the CG50. Now, we've still got our equations, our parametric equations written in from when we inserted that into the graph mode. Now, what we can do is press menu and navigate across to table or press seven. And here you can see, well, we've still got our parametric equations from when we put them into graph mode already there for us. So that's already set for us. So we just need to press F6 for table. And what we're interested in primarily are the first two columns that are generated, XT1 and YT1. You can see we've got the first of four T values here when T is 1, T is 2, T is 3, T is 4. We've got our X values there of 3, 8, 15, 24. Let's just put these into our Cartesian equation. So if X is 3, we know that y is going to be the square root of 3 plus 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. And you can see the corresponding y result there that we've got is 2. Let's just try that again. So we've got an x value of 8. Our y value is going to be the square root of 8 plus 1. 8 plus 1 is 9. The square root of 9 is going to be 3. So we've got our y result there. So there we go, the results produced in table mode also verify our Cartesian equation for the curve. So we're going to put that in the bank as our answer to part B, y equals square root of x plus 1. So there we go, how we can explore parametric equations, or these particular two parametric equations, on the FXCG50, put them in a graph and find the derivative, so therefore we can find the gradient of the curve at particular points and use it to help support our algebraic methods when we're rearranging to find the Cartesian equation of a curve. But that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time on The Calculator Guide.